what is up guys welcome back to another video today i'll be covering another very requested tutorial and another one of my favorite transitions of all times and that is because this is the move that actually got me into beginning calisthenics and that is going to be the l sit to handstand as always let's be clear that there are many ways that we can do this move we can do it with bent legs and bent arms bent arms and straight legs bent legs and straight arms straight legs and straight arms and we can also do it with our hands in the ground which is a lot harder than doing it on the parallels so which one are we going to be covering today all of them so let's begin with the video this tutorial will be broken down into four main parts first we're going to briefly go over the requirements second we're going to start with all bent arm variations the technique to do them the drills to get stronger at them and the common mistakes and how to avoid them. Third, we're going to do the same with all straight arm variations. And finally, we're going to see how to do that move on the floor. So let's begin with the requirements. All right, guys, so here's the deal with the requirements. l sit to handstand. You technically should have an l sit and you should have a handstand. But if I go back in time, I did not have a handstand when I began training for this move. And actually training for the LC2 handstand helped me a lot to balance on my handstand just because I was forced to hold that handstand at the top. However, I will only encourage you to practice the LC2 handstand without having a handstand if first you have enough shoulder strength to perform the transition properly and safely and second you have a good amount of reflexes and you are 100% comfortable getting out of your handstand. If not, please be safe, work on getting a 5 to 10 second L sit and a 5 to 10 second handstand. Both in the parallel if you are trying to get it on the parallel or in the floor if you are working on getting it on the floor. With that being said, let's begin with the bent arm variations. The reason we're beginning with bent arms is simply because bent arm it is much easier than a straight arms. However, I like to think them more of a different movement patterns rather than one being harder than the other, since they each literally need a different set of muscle activation and body coordination. Now, the easiest variation with bent arms is going to be with your legs bent as well, and you're going to add a little bit of momentum. For this variation, you want to start on L sit, then move to a tuck L sit, and from there you're going to shift the weight forward and drive your hips up so they stack right on top of your shoulders. From there, you're going to keep leaning forward to maintain balance while you press with your shoulders into a full handstand position. This variation is great to begin training your body for the movement before you have developed the shoulder strength that is required to do that movement slow, which is going to be our second variation. For this one, you're going to start again on l sit and move to tuck l sit, then shift the weight forward at a speed that you can control until your hips stack right over your shoulders and you finish the movement again by pressing through the shoulders and bringing your legs up at the same exact time. Once you get comfortable with this variation, you can move on to keep your legs straight, your arms are going to still be bent, and this variation it is much harder both in technique and strength as well. For this one, you start on l sit without going to tuck l sit, and you're going to again shift the weight forward until your hips stack over your shoulders. You will then finish the movement by pressing through the shoulders and lifting your legs straight up into your handstand. For this variation, it will really help to have enough hamstring flexibility as this will make it easier to get your hips right over your shoulders without the need of so much strength. However, you are still going to need a good amount of shoulder strength. So now let's take a look at some exercises and some drills that you can use for the LC2 handstand. All right, so I'm gonna be giving you three ways or three stages that we can use to develop the necessary shoulder strength and body awareness that we need to go from LC to handstand. The first stage is going to be developing a basic bent arm strength. For this one, we can do exercises such as dips, push-ups, pike push-ups, handstand push-ups, and so on to build your overall shoulder strength. The second stage is my favorite and the one that I found more useful and that is doing eccentrics or negative to develop both a strength and neuromuscular connection to do the move. To do this, I like to use a bar that is going to allow us to rest our feet in the handstand position so we don't have to worry so much about balance and we can repeat the movement several times in a row. You're going to kick up into your handstand and slowly tuck your knees into your chest then bend your arms and by keeping the knees very close to your body, you bring them through your arms to finish in your L-sit position. 
the trick to stay in balance is going to be your leaning. You want to keep your center of gravity always on top of your shoulders to prevent going down so fast that you're unable to finish the movement. You can then move on to the same exercise with your legs straight if you're working towards achieving that variation. The third and final stage is going to be attempting the move itself. This is probably the best way you can do to actually get a skill, but it's very smart to go in order and first develop the necessary shoulder strength that you need, second work on eccentrics or negative, and then finally working on attempting the move over and over until you finally get it. Now let's see two of the most common mistakes for the bent arm LC2 handstand and how to avoid them. The first one is bending your arms too much and getting too low at the end of the transition. And this will make it almost impossible for you to press up into your handstand. To avoid this, we want to bend our arms no more than a 90 degree angle. A good cue for this is not thinking of bending your arms at all, but instead just focus on leaning and stacking your hips on top of your shoulders. Your arms will bend anyways, but not as much as if you bend them consciously. The second most common mistake is going to be pressing ahead of time, which won't allow you to hold balance at the top. The correction is to wait for your hips to be fully stacked on top of your shoulders, and then you're going to press up into your handstand. Those are basically the two most common mistakes that I see happening in a lot of people, but we are all different. Let me know in the comment section down below if you feel related to any of those mistakes, or if there is anything else that is holding you from achieving the bent arm LC2 handstand. With that being said, let's move on to a straight arm LC2 handstand. As I said, keeping your arms straight during your LC2 handstand is going to be much harder than bending your arms. However, with enough practice and patience, I'm sure we can all achieve this move. For this one, we're going to apply the same methodology uh, with bent arms. So first, we're doing bent legs, straight arms, and we are using a little bit of momentum. So we're going to start again on L-sit and transfer to tuck L-sit, then swing to lean forward, driving our hips up to the sky. So we end up into a tuck handstand position. From there, we only have to strengthen our legs to finish the movement. Again, this first variation can really help you at the beginning to get very familiar with the move prior to develop the necessary shoulder strength to do that movement as slow and control, which again is going to be our second variation. For this one, again, you start on L-sit and move to tuck L-sit, then transfer into a tuck planche, keeping those arms as straight as they can be. Now, to finish the movement, you must lean enough so your hips get over your shoulders and you're able to finish the move. Finally, we have variation number three, which is going to be with a straight arms and a straight legs. For this one, you start on L-sit, and by compressing your core to your legs and leaning forward enough, you get those hips as high as you can over your shoulders, then you keep leaning to finish the movement. For this last variation, it's very good to strengthen the five key areas that I mentioned on my last press to handstand tutorial. I'm gonna link it down in the description. And if you watch that video, you know it is much more about mobility than it is about a stretch. However, now let's take a look at some exercises for our straight arm press to handstand. For the straight arm, we're going to be using the same three stages that we use for bent arm. So again, we need to work on basic straight arm strength, but in this case, we're also going to need to work on our hamstring and our shoulder flexibility. So exercises such as the tuck planche hole and pike wax are going to be great for developing the strength aspect and then add some stretches both for your hamstrings and for your shoulders. Now the second stage is going to be again working on eccentrics and on that negative portion of the move. Again, you would want to use a bar to support your feet while we work on lowering down to the L-sit with as much control as possible. You can work both on your bent legs variation and on your stray legs variation. Finally, we're left off with the third stage, which again is going to be working on the move itself and practicing over and over until we're able to get it. So to recap, first work on your basic straight arm strength, hamstring and shoulder flexibility, then move on to doing eccentrics, and finally work on practicing the movement over and over until it becomes part of you. Now, when it comes to mistakes on the straight arm variations, we first found that we're not leaning forward enough, and we simply correct this by leaning even more than we think we should. And the second mistake is going to be lacking either shoulder flexibility, hamstring flexibility, or both combined. And to fix this, we simply work on our flexibility so we can get into the position without having to become amazingly strong. Now, to finish the video, let's see how we can take this incredible skill from the parallels and do it on the floor. 
I will not be spending too much time here since the same principles apply whether you're doing bent arms or you're doing straight arms. The only difference here is that our legs are going to be bent at all times. Unless, of course, you have developed a crazy amount of compression strength and hamstring flexibility to perform the straight arms and straight legs variation on the floor. So I'm simply going to leave you with some tips that are going to help you to get that movement on the floor. First, begin with your hands elevated on something, maybe a couple blocks, to make this move a whole lot easier. Then work your way down to perform the move on the floor. Second, you'll want to cross your legs so they go through your arms with this. Experiment with different crossing positions to see what works best for you. And the final tip has to be again to work on your flexibility because even if you're going for the bent arm variation, you still need an L seat on the floor and you still need a good amount of compression to get your legs through. So there you have it guys, I hope this video gives you the tools you need to go from L seat to handstand. If you need more information on the bent arm aspect, you can check my crow to handstand tutorial or if you want more information on the straight arm aspect, you can check my press to handstand tutorial. Both are going to be linked down in the description. But as always, if you want me to extend on this topic or on any particular area, or if you want me to do a follow along video like I did for the press to handstand, don't hesitate, leave your comment down below and I'll be more than happy to do that. If you made it this far into the video and you did enjoy this video, give it a big thumbs up to support the channel, that really helps a ton. Also, share with a friend that can benefit from the information on this video or from the information on my previous video. And if you happen to be new to this channel, consider hitting that subscribe button so you don't miss any future content and join the family. It's a fun journey. So with that being said, guys, I'll see you all next week. Love you.